you know, if it was your kid or if it was mine, I don't think they would be able to um, go home and prepare to be arrested after a hit and run. No, they wouldn't. And so uh, this is a very interesting case, but it should highlight how thick the thin blue line is. Good afternoon and thanks so much for joining us. I'm Tram Mai. Breaking news this afternoon. The sheriff's office confirms a truck involved in a deadly hit and run over the weekend is registered to a law enforcement officer. 12 News journalist Joe Dana is gathering details on this crash. Joe, what have you found out? Another tragedy involving a pedestrian crash. This time a truck hit a jogger Saturday morning in the New River neighborhood. That's in the far North Valley. Now the victim has been identified as 43 year old Lisa Mancuso, a mom and wife. We're told Mancuso was jogging on the shoulder near 7th Avenue and Cloud Road when she was hit. The truck took off. Deputies spent the weekend searching for clues. Sheriff Russ Skinner confirming this afternoon the owner of the truck is a law enforcement officer. Skinner says a relative of that officer is suspected of driving the truck. The owner of the vehicle did come forward. We were also working angles of, of information. I, I want to stop right there for a second and just thank the witnesses uh, and the community for providing us a lot of information that helped with our investigation. Um, I think the paths kind of crossed at this the same time when the, the employee was aware. That is the truck caught on surveillance camera. The sheriff says they're working with prosecutors and plan on making an arrest in the coming days. We're working to find out, of course, the identity of the suspect, their relationship to the law enforcement officer who owns the truck, and just any other factors here that led to this deadly accident. You know, anytime you have a sworn peace officer's personal vehicle involved in an alleged crime, it prompts a lot of additional questions. MCSO says they have no evidence to believe that the officer had any involvement in this crash, but we'll bring you updates as we get them. For now, back to you. There's no circumstance where a cop won't take the opportunity to be cruel and to treat you subhuman and to be completely absent the ability to use any type of reasoning to try to figure the situation out. They don't try to figure the situation out. They, they, they're as cruel as they can be, and from the first inkling that they've done something wrong, they're in cover thine ass mode. Back to Virginia Beach and a Navy spouse looking to clear her name after that name got her arrested. She got hauled in for a warrant out of Baltimore County. The first and last name were right, but the middle name and the person were wrong. Not to mention the injury she said she suffered when base police searched her. Henry Shots Kiana Patterson had the story new tonight. Wow, Kiana, how did this all happen? Well, Jacqueline A. Smith calls this nothing short of a nightmare when she was brought here to jail in Virginia Beach and booked under Jacqueline R. Smith, which is not her name. It was a usual trip to J.E.B. Little Creek two weeks ago that led to an aggressive arrest of Navy wife Jacqueline Alceda Smith with her newborn in the back seat. Is this how you treat a service member's wife? Like, is this how you're treating a new mother? Smith says base police were so rough she started bleeding as she was taken to Virginia Beach City Jail, where she was booked under the wrong name, Jacqueline Renee Smith. They fingerprinted me. They took mug shots of me under this person's name. Her family worked for two days to clear the mix up. To have to strip naked, to have to spread and cough, and all while I'm experiencing a medical emergency. Smith said she was ignored by everyone. The Navy police, the Virginia Beach PD, and the sheriff's office, they were picking and choosing when to use my correct name. The court documents still show the wrong name, which belongs to a woman wanted for aggravated assault in Baltimore County. Now the identities have been blurred. Paperwork shows VBPD began to have concerns of the identity adding a police lieutenant noticed inconsistencies with the fingerprints. Smith was later released with a $5 bond. That was the extent of their, their, their sorry. The mom of two had to hire an attorney for an extradition hearing last week. It was just merely to address, are we going to extradite this person or not? Now it's on her to navigate how to correct all of the legal documents and get the case expunged from her record. I'm just thankful that there are people who are willing to listen to my story. 
And Virginia Beach police say they are now doing an internal investigation into the officer's action. Virginia Beach Sheriff's Office released a statement. I'll share that over on wavy.com. But Smith says it is not over. She is doing a petition and she plans to speak before city council next Tuesday. In well, that won't do any good, but I'm glad she's, you know, she's fired up. This is an absolutely, this is not just a, a simple little story here, folks. You know, these cover-ups and the things that they do, they're tantamount to framing people. That's right. This cop was trying to frame her. And so this should really, these are very serious cases. This is not just a, a simple little oopsie. Well, it's plain to see that the cops don't aim to maim. And it's also pretty clear they spare no expense on the ammo. Tommy Alejandro Avalos was killed in the early morning of January 18, his family pleading to get answers from police. It was just past 2 a.m. on January 18 when Bakersfield police responded to a shot spotter alert on 13th Street and Chester Avenue, just east of Bakersfield High School. Police said a suspect in a car fired a shot and officers returned fire, killing the man on the scene. 46-year-old Alejandro Avalos, also known as Esmeraldo Martinez from Michoacán, Mexico, was in that white truck. He was visiting siblings in Bakersfield. His sister, Lilia Martinez, pleading answers from Bakersfield police. They haven't given me any information. It's been almost a month since he passed away, since they murdered him. It's been the worst month of my life. Um, I never thought this was going to be the worst year, maybe, of my life. He was my oldest brother. I never thought I would have to take care of his funeral or any of my brother's funerals. It's just really heartbreaking. Lilia says she is not aware of her brother owning a gun or rifle and thinks the situation sounds out of character for her brother. Esmeraldo, he was the happy soul of the family. He was always calling everybody, make sure, making sure everybody was okay. He was, you would never see him um, sad or angry. He, he was just so happy all the time. The family wants to know if his killing was justified. I, I just want to know if what they did was okay, if they didn't use excessive amount of force, because it was just a single person in that car for so many bullets. I don't know exactly how many they fired at him, but that's what I've seen on the floor, on the news, that was too much. Some questions still unanswered by police include how many officers fired shots at the suspect and what is the work status of the officers. Thanks for watching the Bad Apple Report, folks. I hope you had fun today. I had fun today. Did you dance with me today to the NYPD? I'm going to put a link above. I had a lot of fun. Hey, listen, thank you so yeah, much for really hitting the like button no and sharing the video and all these videos with you. No you help this channel grow like a rock. No Thank you so much. Have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow morning. Everybody really won't feel no shame. No shame. No shame at all.